also take care of the of letting in the people. So if you open the participants uh, participants part, then yeah, you just you just keep an eye. Maybe somebody else is is yeah, joining I'm in. That. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I would like to tell a little bit more about the the context of this. Um, so since a year or two, I have been. Um, uh, have been taking care of the uh, KiCad Fab Library, so I picked it up from where it was, and uh, added a few tests and uh, cleaned it up um, and tried to get it to a level where one could actually use it for for teaching the Fab Academy. Um, and. Um, so I myself, I, I do creative coding, projection mapping, and digital fabrication. So this is more. Uh, so I'm doing that out, outside of the whenever, whenever I'm not managing the lab. But for the for the past two years, I've been mostly managing the lab and in, instructing the Fab Academy. So I didn't have too much time to do any uh, external and, and additional projects, um, except that. Uh, but what we did also with with Runge together was this conch project with the. Uh, which is an open source furniture project. Uh, but yeah, if you want to explore these more, you're welcome to go to my website and, and click on the links available here. And then the lab that I'm managing is Alta Fab Lab, which is in uh, Southern Finland, um, like the greater uh, Helsinki region or more precisely Espo, which is a part of, a part of the Alto University, uh, the Department of Arts and Design. And uh, yeah, so if you want to learn more about the lab, you're welcome to visit the, the website as well. And then during, uh, during my uh, instruction practice as a Fab Academy instructor, so last year was very productive in terms of um, YouTube videos. So it was uh, partly a response to, uh, to the pandem pandemic situation that I wanted to make as, as, much, as, uh, as much content as possible available online. And uh, it was also partly um, a, a pedagogical approach that uh, there's in, in many cases, in many of the Fab Academy weeks, uh, the information that has to be transferred or the, yeah, the knowledge that has to be transferred to the students, it's quite detailed. And uh, often it involves uh, navigating in between different sources and um, which contain different details, small details, a lot of details. And uh, I thought that it could be a good idea to actually have uh, local sessions where I go through all of these details in also in a way that I show these things uh, locally at the lab. And then at the same time, I record. Um, I record whatever is possible to record and edit them really quickly and upload them to YouTube for the students later to access. and. Uh, and uh, be able to just watch the the content multiple times because you know, as we know repetition is the is the mother uh, of, of uh, knowledge uh, like in some cultures at least people tend to say so and here uh in the alto fab lab channel you can actually already find um some tutorials some videos that uh deal with KiCad. So there's uh, electronics design with KiCad video, for example. And uh, uh, yeah, like using and updating the Fab KiCad library, the, the tutorial is already there. Um, and then with, with that in mind, uh, so this session is also sort of a reminder to myself that I should uh, keep up with the development of the fab library and i would also like to uh, inform more people so as many people as possible that this library exists and that it's actually open source this is on gitlab but that you can actually freely contribute to it and uh, so with this session i would like to talk more about um, so what are the approaches what is the what are the ideas behind it and and the, the way how i do maintain it at the moment and uh, would would like to maintain it in the future. Uh, so I introduced myself already. Uh, so with, with that in mind, I would like you to say a few words. So it's not a purely one way discussion, but um, so that as I want you to involve, uh, I involve you to contribute to the Fab Library, it would be 
also nice to hear what is what is your motivation and so on uh, while you are joining this session uh, then also in the further further in the in the discussion i want to um, tell and discuss more what um, about what is the kaika fab library actually why it is important um then i will show a demo about how to use it um then also we'll discuss how to contribute to it and then we can also discuss other other questions so in, in case you have them so um Maybe Ranji, do you have um, a list of, of participants open? Um, maybe you could uh, just go over one by one and we could um, introduce ourselves. Yeah, sure. I mean, I could start with myself. I'm Ranjit. I've just uh, been active uh, in the Fab Academy 2021. And I was interested in developing my own concepts uh, which is like an electronic chanting box, Indian electronic chanting box. And um, I would say the course was very intense and KiCad was one of the absolutely central uh, things to learn in order to achieve like a high fidelity prototype. So yeah, there was a lot of learning, um, but maybe I can ask uh, maybe Dean to start perhaps because he's first on my video <laughs> cam. Okay. Yeah. Good, good morning, everybody. I'm here in uh, Urbana, Illinois. Uh, let's see, I'm affiliated with the Champaign-Urbana Community Fab Lab. Actually, I graduated Fab Academy in uh, 2011, so I'm kind of a low number, uh, but I've been uh, watching the progress of the lab uh, over the last uh, decade. Um, still, I, I, I was very interested in this particular uh, session because uh, I, I was just really curious to see how the uh, inventory of the electronics inventory has uh, has been keeping up with the changing times. It looks kind of familiar with what you're doing, but uh, looking forward to uh, uh, to your presentation. I actually do decorative iron work and uh, some foundry work and other things, but I, I do like to dabble in uh, little bit of electronics. Uh, cur currently, I'm doing a lot with uh, not open source material, but with uh, Autodesk Fusion, uh, using that for design and, uh, and uh, 3D printing. Although it does have a, uh, a uh, uh, <clears throat> Eagle component for circuits, but I think KiCad is, I, I like the KiCad because it's going to be open source and uh, should be able to get some of the existing uh, uh, projects uh, that the Fab Labs have developed and get them printed out a little bit easier. So that's my story. Thank you. Thank you, Dina. Maybe, uh, Chris, you want to add something or should we move to the next? Uh, let's, let's move on. So thank yeah. you, Dean. Um, Thank you. Chris. Uh, hey, this is Jean-Michel. Yeah. I just jump back in. In terms of screen sharing, I think you can only share like a window at the time. So if you want to switch, I'm afraid you'll have to like stop sharing and reshare. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing currently. So uh, yeah. since I was wanted to show a uh, demo, and I'm going to be switching uh, between multiple windows, so I thought it would be nice to share the display. But if it's not possible, then that's that's uh, fine. I'm going to work look my into way it, around. I'm afraid not. So there's a workaround. So at least you can make it work, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to manage somehow. Perfect. I'll talk to you later. Have a good session. All right. Thanks. See so, you. Uh, um, Antonio, would you like to say a few words? Hello, good morning. Uh, here, Portugal, um, near Lisbon. Uh, I, I work in a fab lab in Torres Vedras, it's uh, 50 kilometers from, from, from Lisbon. And um, we are uh, searching for a, a software that, an open source software about uh, PCBs and so on. We work with a lot of, with the students and, and we normally we, we use uh, Eagle as, as usual. Uh, everyone, more or less everyone use it. But uh, we, we want to have something open source, so that's why uh, I'm here to see what what you guys are are uh, presenting to us as a solution for that. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Antonio. 
Um, uh, Brendan, you, would you like to say a few words next? Good morning, all from Ireland. Uh, we're basically we're, we're the newbies, uh, the new kids on the block. Uh, we're just trying to get a fab lab up and running here. Uh, it's a long way to Tipperary, as they say, uh, the, the Tipperary fab lab. And uh, I came across the event, uh, wanted, was curious to know a little bit more. Uh, we're not doing anything at the moment. As I say, we're, we're in startup mode uh, and just interested to learn a, li a little bit more. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thanks, Brendan. Yeah, I mean, uh, Chris has been also helping start up uh, Fab Lab in Latvia. Maybe you want to connect with him later as well. Andre, you want to say a few words? Just say, uh, welcome, Brendan. Hello, uh, I'm Andre from Portugal, Fab Lab Benfica. Uh, we were um, Fab Academy notes for the first year year and uh yeah we've been using kai card key card i've been uh, pushing for that and i'm interested in getting to know how the the fab library is evolving thank you thanks a lot andre yeah i think fab library is gonna be explained uh, later on and isa would you be able to introduce yourself a bit yeah hello how are you yeah, I'm good. Uh, my name is Asa. I am a Fab Lab technician uh, speaking to you from Lebanon, from Beirut. Uh, our Fab Lab uh, is in uh, Beritech. Uh, we have an incubator system for startups. And uh, yeah, uh, what else do you want to know? No, it's just a general introduction, so there's no, <laughs> yeah, it's it's free. So maybe I, thanks a lot, Isa, so I'll hand it over to Chris for the presentation. Sure. Yeah, thanks, Ranjit. So, yeah, I just wanted to make it a bit more relaxed so that uh, it's more like a discussion um, around an uh, open table with uh, one of us showing a few pieces of paper about Kaika. Um, and uh, so basically, uh, I just wanted to tell my perspective on it. Uh, so what is the KiCad Fab Library? Um, so essentially, it's a symbol and, and footprint and 3D model library. Uh, so 3D model, uh, it's library that's, that's kind of a, an addition, but it opens um, a really nice possibility for the electronic circuit boards um, then being exported as 3D models and let's say being used as um, a starting point for your project that you would be then doing with the either FreeCAD or um, let's say Fusion or X-Design or SolidWorks like any of the uh, 3D modeling packages. And uh, so it's also um, Fab Electronics Inventory in KiCAD. So I think most of you know the the spreadsheet, the Google spreadsheet with all the parts that are needed for a fab lab. And there is the uh, extensive part of all the electronic uh, components that uh, a lab would need. So you can treat uh, the KiCad fab library as, um, as an inventory, as another, uh, as another way how to look at the inventory. And uh, yeah, so it contains all the uh, computer-aided design blocks for all the Fab Academy Hello boards. So at least that's the, that's the one of the, uh, that's the main goal. So that when you take the Fab Academy and you start out with electronics and let's say you have no background, uh, KiCad would be the, uh, the tool of choice in order to be able to make all Hello boards. And you know, the goal is to have as less uh, problems as possible uh, with it. So, and then it can also be a link between uh, fabable boards, um, like a link between fab and manufacturing. So when you learn to use the fab library uh, and you produce a final project of yours or a project of yours, then it should be fairly easy to actually uh, then uh, change the project or adjust it to, um, you know, to be capable, um, so for it to be possible to be sent to one of the manufacturing houses online, uh, or maybe you have a manufacturing uh, facility just next doors, uh, you know, some 
in a, in a hidden garage. So there's a young entrepreneur starting a startup with uh, his uh, etching uh, mechanism or a new robot or a production line. I don't know. And uh, another, uh, like another thing that to say about a library is that, that, that it's an atomic library. Um, because if you, so atomic library means uh, that each uh, symbol uh, is also connected with a specific footprint and also a 3D model. You know. But in the, in the official CACAD libraries, uh, a lot of symbols are, I think most of the symbols by default, they are, disconnected from the footprints and uh, this uh, can be can be a bit complicated to understand um, for a very beginner uh, so there are quite a lot of uh, steps in between so between the schematic and the actual circuit board and uh, so the decision to make the library atomic uh, was to kind of make it easier uh, for the for the beginners to cross the across the boundary between the schematic view to the PCB view, as you will see later. And it can be also as a, as a source for, uh, source of documentation. Um, but I think I, I mentioned it uh, up there. So yeah, it's like a fab electronics inventory in KiCad, but for each uh, symbol, since it's atomic, it's also connected with the footprint of a, of a component. You can, um, uh, you can find a data sheet of that particular component. I think one of the next things that I want to do with the library is actually to make sure that every of the uh, symbols and the components, they actually have the data sheet in there. But uh, so that's that's the that's one way of using it. And then uh, Chris, uh, there is a question regarding library. Uh, yeah. If there is a URL for Fab Lab requirements as well, like a spreadsheet, I think, yeah. So do you have, is there a similar spreadsheet like for Fab Lab requirements, I guess, for, for the, Inventory, I guess. Um, wait, I will check the chat because I. Will... So, is there a URL for the Fab Lab requirements spreadsheet? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, just uh, give me a sec. I will share the. I will share the browser window. Um, I think it makes sense to start with the URL, uh, which is the generic uh, fab URL uh, from the Center of um, Bits and Atoms uh, at the MIT. So it's fab.cba.mit.edu. Um, and then uh, And from there, you can find um, all the information about Fab Labs in general. But for some reason, it doesn't work so well. Let's see, maybe this link. So for some reason, the website is down. But this is uh, this is the place where you would be able to find it. And um, uh, there is an inventory link. Yeah. So basically, this link uh, should bring you to the inventory. What? Okay. Also, give me a second. It seems that the uh, the, the AC socket where I connected my computer it's not working. I need to connect it to the power. Okay, this one works. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, uh, but you would normally be able to access this through this link, but for some reason it is down. Oh, I don't know, maybe. I don't know what's wrong there. Uh, yeah. And um, apart from that, So yeah, uh, is there any any more questions in between, or I can go on? 
I think uh, there are no questions. I think he, he's Brendan was referring to uh, to a spreadsheet that he has found. If you want to check the link, I guess. Mm, let's see. Yep, this is the one. Um, so this one is, uh, I think it's an alias. Uh, so the, the address that I was showing was an alias, but this is the, the actual link. Yeah. And uh, if we share it here, this one. So yeah, if you scroll down, you'll find the um, DigiKey section. And here is where the electronic components start. So you see they start with a, a bunch of resistors, capacitors, diodes, um, integrated circuits, uh, and also the AT tiny over here. And there is also an extensive list of uh, connectors and so on. So in the fab library, why I think it's important uh, is, is it that it makes the fab academy less frustrating? Uh, I'm just wondering, so Ranjit or like any, anybody else who has taken the fab academy and um, was a beginner in electronics in the, in the first place when starting it, could maybe tell me more. And it makes it less frustrating for students and instructors uh, because then if everybody is using um, KiCad uh, and the library, then it's easier for the instructors to actually help because uh, if everybody is using the same, then the same patterns can be reused in order to solve problems. And then, uh, so if you know, uh, if you have downloaded KiCad uh, like at least once in your life, you know that it comes to, with uh, its own library. Um, and it's huge. Uh, it tries to have um, every part possible from any manufacturer. And for a beginner, at least I remember myself, it was usually very hard to figure out which of the parts and which of the footprints that do I need to use. And then as for the fab library, so less parts means more fun. So you spend uh, less time trying to figure out which of the parts is important. You just use the part, you make your board, uh, you make it uh, functional. And then if, if you still have time, then you can try to replace one or two components with something else if, if you have to have the curiosity to do so. And with the, with the Fab library, since it's uh, open source, so everybody, everybody can contribute in, in several ways. Uh, so you can just submit an issue. So if you are adding a component or fixing an existing component or just bug fixing, then you can always uh, either push directly or submit a pull request. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit more about it later. And then uh, since you're joining this, uh, this session, maybe some of you actually have your idea. What, why is it important? So what's, what's your perspective on it? All right, um, so anyways, like we can have a discussion at the end of this. Um, so yeah, and then I wanted to just uh, spend a little bit of time on the best practices or like how to use the library. So first of all, where to find it, um, then best installation practices, then making a simple hello um, board uh, using the fab library. So I'm mean, gonna just uh, replicate the AT tiny 412 hello board really quickly. And, and then I'm, I'm gonna show some uh, practices how you can contribute to the project. So I'm gonna start out with uh, sharing the browser screen. And again, so here we see the fab inventory, but what we want to have is the actual library. And the library, uh, so the open source repository of it uh, is on the uh, gitlab.fablab.fabcloud.org. And then there is pub uh, and libraries and an electronics sub uh, section and a KiCad. 
And um, yeah, as you can see, it looks uh, like a generic uh, GitLab repository. So with the, the amount of commits and the branches and so on, and a readme file over here, uh, so which covers the basic installation steps over here. And there's an ongoing to do. So during the last year, I managed to go through uh, all of the components and check whether they are they're actually matching the, the parts that uh, we have in the fab inventory over here. And uh, actually one of the next steps that I would like to do is to maybe make it automatic so that there would be some sort of, a, uh, you know, like, because we, we do not get like a notification about every part that is added here to the list when, uh, when Neil or his team uh, does it. And this is why it would be nice to have a, a script that is being run uh, once a day, let's say, and, and check whether the whether the actual parts in the library still uh, still match the, the inventory. Um, and then there is a yeah, how to contribute. So I have a few tests um, here. So before you before you push, you can run the, the Python script, which is actually going to test whether you have the footprint assigned to the symbol uh, and cross check whether for a footprint, uh, there is a matching symbol and so on. And then there's a basic license. So in order to use that, uh, what you need to know is the, uh, is the SSH or HTTPS address of the repository. Uh, if you plan to, oh, to contribute, to push back to the repository, then you're recommended to use the SSH. Uh, if you want to continuously update, so it's recommended um, so since we are, sort of, it's all, always evolving, especially during the Fab Academy. Some of the instructors notices that um, something is not right, then we are trying to fix it uh, as soon as possible. And then in order to also uh, have the changes locally on your computer, you should use Git and uh, update it before starting starting KiCad. But um, yeah, so if you do not plan to uh, to contribute to it right away, then you can use this HTTPS only. So this is also not requiring you to have um, the SSH key assigned with your GitLab profile. Um, so now, so I'm going to choose the SSH. Um, I'm going to unshare the screen because next. The next part is going to be sharing the terminal screen like this. And uh, what do you do? So on, on your systems, uh, so you need to be, you will be able to find a, a similar view. So if you are on Linux, then naturally you're probably quite used to use uh, a terminal. Uh, on, on Mac OS, you have an application that is called Terminal. It has a, by default a white background and, and black letters. Um, and then on on Windows, you could you could use either Git Bash or uh, any of the terminal uh, terminal uh, emulators. Uh, but how would so most of them uh, use the your similar language? So most of them I have also Git installed. Um, if not, then you can go to the Git website and you can see how to install Git. Uh, I'm going to go to desktop. Demos. Um, and I'm going to make a new folder. And here I'm going to git clone the repository. And it's going to appear as a, as a folder. And it has all the necessary files uh, that you need to do you need to add to KiCad uh, in it? So, so starting from the fab lib, which is the symbols library, um, to the uh, to the fab uh, pretty, which is the, the footprint library. And then there's the 3D shapes, uh, which is which is the 3D symbols, uh, you know, the 3D, 3D objects that are mapped to the, to the footprints. And then uh, fab uh, 3D source, these are the source files. Um, so I'm trying to make a collection of uh, FreeCAD files over here. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, the most important parts for just getting started is the fab lib and fab pretty. Um, so the 3D shapes part is uh, kind of slowly evolving. I, I would like to get the, um, you know, the fab lib and the fab pretty part working fine and then kind of uh, gradually move on with the, with the 3D shapes. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's quite powerful. So it's uh, impressive once you get to the 3D, using 3D shapes in, in your electronics designs. And what is interesting with Fab uh, Pretty, uh, so with the footprints, is that um, they are uh, as separate files. So if I move into the directory and I list them, so you see these are all the footprints and they come with um, as, as individual files. And then FabLib is um, one long list of all the components. And actually in the long term, uh, it probably would make sense to separate the, the symbol library in, in several files. Uh, even though it doesn't, it doesn't uh, make a problem for, for KiCad to load uh, a file that is this long, but sometimes uh, you know, the algorithms that are responsible for saving uh, changes, they sometimes mess up and you need to kind of bug fix the, the library. So it's better actually to have it modularized. But yeah, so these are the files. Um, and then what do you do? You open KiCad and I have to change the sharing again, like here. Uh, so, and usually it makes sense to start out um, a KiCad project or start the KiCad by starting the, the host application, so the kind of the umbrella application of it. And uh, as you probably know, a KiCad is actually a collection of applications. So one is the schematic editor, the other is the uh, PCB editor, and then for each of those there's a symbol editor to make new symbols or edit existing ones and then also the footprint. Uh, footprint editor, which is this one. Uh, so yeah, so this is like the schematic editor. This is the symbol editor, uh, the PCB layout editor, and then the footprint editor. And then there are a few handy, um, few handy tools such as this Gear Gerber file viewer, which can be useful when you want to send off your board to manufacturing. You just want to double check whether all your Gerber files are fine. Uh, the code, uh, usually in, in PCB manufacturing, the manufacturing houses, they are, they're acquiring the Gerber files. And this is a nice tool to check it. Uh, then in order to add the library, you go to preferences and manage symbol libraries. And here, as you can see, I have only one library here uh, because I disabled all the uh, default KiCad libraries just to make um, KiCad run faster. So it's not just going to be easier for the beginner, but it's also going to run faster in general because it's not going to need to load all the all the other uh, KiCad libraries. And it's um, so it's, the the files are sometimes quite huge, and it, it takes some time, and it can crash in the middle. So it's better actually to have this fab library. Uh, here, yeah, and, and then, yeah, you need to enter a nickname and you need to enter the, the library path. Uh, so here, this is the, the path that I, the, like my existing path, but I could be just click on this icon. I don't know whether you, you can see the select file uh, dialog right now. Uh, uh, Chris, I don't believe we are seeing the, the other windows from the, from Kaika. I think you are, you are stuck on the, on the main one, on the main. Yeah, uh, I noticed that as well. So, okay, so here Sorry. we have the symbol libraries. So now you should be able to see this. Uh, how do we get? How do we get there? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, this is why it would be nice to actually share the. Shared it. No, no, no. That's that's. Um, so I have to find a workaround because I was expecting that I will be able to share the display, but I can share only individual windows. So here, uh, so from the project window, when you go to preferences and go to manage symbol libraries, this is gonna open the symbol libraries dialog. So I'm gonna click on this and then uh, change the screen sharing to, to share it. So I'm gonna stop sharing now. And we have symbol libraries dialog over here. So, and 
Then in the global libraries tab, uh, you should specify the location for the fab.lib file from the repository. Um, so uh, a minute earlier, I downloaded it on, on desktop uh, and demos <coughs> uh, directory, but uh, yeah, so you, you can choose your own. So when you click on this uh, little uh, folder icon, then you'll be able to open the file dialog of it. Uh, yeah, the file selection dialog. Um, now, wait, I need to stop the share of this one and so we'll go back to this. So now you should be able to see the uh, project dialog again. And then for the footprints, you need to go to preferences and manage footprint libraries. So can you see the dialog when I clicked on the, on the preferences and uh, manage? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you click on the manage footprint libraries and it's going to open up a, a dialog that is similar to the previous one. I'm going to share it. Yeah. And here uh, you need to specify the directory of the fab dot uh, pretty. Um, yeah, not the individual files, but just the directory. So and the KiCad is going to do the rest of the work and it's just going to load all the footprints um, in, its, um, in its pockets. And and that's that's that. And um, one more thing. Um, so I'm going to stop share. So if you want to make use of the of the three D objects, then there's one more thing to do. So you need to configure paths. So in you need to add um, a new variable name, um, which is fab. It should be a fab because it's it's being referred to in the in the footprint library. So every footprint is assigned to a specific 3D model, and and then it uses this fab variable to actually access the the root directory of the of the fab library of, of the of your download. So you you add the name uh, fab with capital letters, and then you specify the the directory of the of the library so of the of the repository basically um so you can you see the configure paths dialog now on the screen is it sharing no i don't think you can see that wait mm -hmm. oh okay so this one yeah so when you go to preferences and configure paths then you should be able to see this one so in here you add the the fab um, variable name and then uh, the actual path on your system to the fab um, to the fab library. So but that's an additional thing. So you don't necessarily have to do that unless you want to use the three uh, D model capabilities. Um, then from here, uh, uh, yeah. So let's say that. Um, You've been trying out this test project and you bumped into um, error you know some of the uh, schematic symbols is uh, is a bit off and uh, you also reported to the issue tracker of the project uh, i'm going to talk more about it later uh that it's that there's something wrong and uh, me or somebody else has fixed the problem and you would like to pull in the changes so what do you do is that you close KiCad. So on different systems is done in different ways. Uh, meaning that in usually when you click the this little cross of the window on on the on Mac, then it doesn't necessarily close the, the whole program. So you can you have to kill it completely. So on Linux, it's easy. I just uh, close the window of the the manager on all the related KiCad uh, KiCad windows. Uh, and then what you should do, you should clone, not the clone, but you should pull in the latest changes. So yeah, you uh, kill KiCad and then you go, oh, here I already started. Uh, so then you open your terminal. And you go to where you downloaded the, the library. So I'm going to go to desktop. Uh, 
Ah, I'm already there, actually. Yeah. So PWD. So uh, so yeah, here, here is the KiCad library. So you should move into the directory, into the into repository directory. Uh, here are all the files. And what you should do is to issue git pull. And if there are changes, then it's it's going to pull in the changes and update the files in the directory. And the next thing, what do you have to do is to run launch KiCad again. Then uh, KiCad is going to is going to load in the the changes, the updated libraries, and from there you'll be able to make a new project. So we're going to make a new project. Mm -hmm. Demos, uh, Fab 16. And I'm going to go and give it a name. I'm sure that you cannot see the, the file save dialog in the moment. It's um, you know, create, create new file. So create new project. Um, so this is it. So I'm going to call the project like hello T412 and hit save. And um, oh, this is so hard with the sharing the windows individually. So yeah, now we are back to the, the project manager. On the left side, you can see that there is a schematic uh, file created and KiCad PCB file created. So you should um, open up the schematic file in the schematic editor. So we'll need to show the schematic editor. Yeah, this one. And uh, yeah, in order to start placing components, um, I can also activate this. How oh, this key mon is not going to be visible, so it doesn't make really sense. Okay. Uh, so in order to add symbols, you choose this one, and then you click anywhere on the on the canvas. And now I need to share the choose symbol part. And here, uh, if you have only the Fab library installed, then this is the only thing that you will see. Uh, and the choose symbol dialog is going to open also really fast because it will not need to load all the libraries. That um, you know, if you, if you have all the default KiCad libraries, then then they will load, and it's going to take a minute or half a minute, depending on the speed of your computer. Uh, but with only the Fab library, it's just going to be lightning fast, so it's just going to load in like this. Uh, and here are all the things. So I think like, since it's the it's going to be this hello board for for at tiny or twelve, so you can just type the or at tiny so if you type at tiny then uh then you're just gonna see all the at tiny uh chips over here so this is also one uh, one improvement uh over the the older library um uh like a few years ago there was still so when you would use the fab library it would be really hard to find parts uh because they wouldn't have this um description file where you would enter all the keywords and some basic description about each of the, the symbols and now uh so I, I tried to fix it for every symbol and now KiCad is also reading that in and that makes it easier for to search for symbols really if you have multiple libraries installed, then uh, usually the recommended way is that you would start with fab and then write the uh, the part in question, um, let's say a resistor. And it would be much easier to find the part that is necessary for your design. And here you can select uh, any of the parts that you want to use. So in this case, it's going to be at tiny for 12. And um, I need to share back the S schema. So yeah, here, so we are placing this. And now by using the same dialog, I'm not going to jump uh, from window to window at this time. I'm just going to add all the components that we're going to need for this design. Now uh, it's just going to be, uh, so we're going to need um, resistor, 
definitely for the LED. So we're gonna add a resistor, then we're gonna add the LED right here. Then we're gonna add the capacitor, like a bypass capacitor. I think, uh, again, we can't see the pop-up window, but I guess... Uh... Yeah, yeah, uh, as I told, I'm not gonna switch between, between the, the pop-up window and this one, because it's basically the same as I explained. So you just type in a capacitor or resistor in there. I'm just gonna populate the design with all the parts that we need here, um, so not to lose too much time, unless you want me to show it uh, one more time, so, okay. And uh, so we will need a, a few headers also. So for example, ah, here, this is actually a point where I would like to show you uh, the dialogue, choose symbol dialogue, because we need FTDI. So if you type FTDI, so there's actually a FTDI specific connector. So you don't need to figure out from, uh, from a random, from a long list of pin headers, which is, uh, which is the connector that you need. You can just select the fab FTDI connector. And, um, and the same goes actually for for the UPDI. Um, so if you add a UPDI, you need to type UPDI in the search box, uh, and you get a UPDI connector as here. Um, let's connect it all together. So I'm gonna take this capacitor and connect it between those. between the ground and the voltage input. And then I am going to connect the UPDI. Maybe I'm gonna use labels over here. I'm gonna add a ground symbol over here. We'll copy this also to this ground over here. Then I'm gonna add a label UPDI here. And um, here, of course, we'll need to remember that uh, we want to flip those. So I'm gonna add uh, RX here and TX here. And uh, here also with the fab symbols, um, I was trying to add all the, the names um, of the pins, not just the pin numbers, but also the, the uh, mega tiny core functionality. So if, because most probably uh, when people who are starting out with Fab Academy are going to try to program these, they're gonna use the Arduino way, so the UPDI. And then here, yeah, this is gonna be the TX since we flipped it already. And this is gonna be the RX, like so. And then here, I think we can connect the LED. And then the resistor. And then we can connect this to ground. And then the rest of those are here. We need uh, UPDI. And then those two we are not gonna use. So therefore I'm gonna add a no connect symbol over here. Uh, here also, so I need a ground. And I need a VCC. That's somewhere here. And the input is most probably gonna be five volts. So power, 
So yeah, uh, here when you click on the place power port, um, I can a similar deal dialogue is for the oh, for the choose symbol uh, dialogue is going to open. And uh, yeah, I added also power symbols to the fab library. So it's because sometimes you need to add the power flag where the power inputs are in order for the for the debugger or the, uh, so the electric rules checker to the work properly to not, not throw any errors. So all of these symbols are also included in the, in the fab library. Um, there were some issues at the beginning of the course that uh, so some people downloaded the plain KiCad and the fab library and then in the tutorials it was shown that you need to add the power flag and it was not there and you would need to download it from the official fab um, in KiCad libraries in order to make it work. Uh, but now they are here. And uh, yeah, let's add a few more no connects over here like this. And yeah, that's pretty each, pretty much it. So you you would you would uh, probably also adjust the the value of the capacitor and also the resistor and maybe specify the color of the LED. But um, for today, I think it's not not so important. And you can hit the save uh, and you can open up the assigned PCB footprints to schematics and symbols uh, editor. But before that, uh, yeah, you probably need to annotate the schematic symbol. So you press this button. It's going to open up a dialog um, that uh, looks like this. So the default is uh, usually fine. So the scope, uh, yeah, let it be the entire schematic. The options is that, uh, yeah, if you choose to actually add your individual annotations to the specific schematic symbols, then these are going to be kept. And the order, yeah, uh, that's fine. And then this is also fine. And then you just click annotate. Then you close this. And now we can share schematic again. And from here, uh, so once the annotation is done, so you'll see that uh, our question mark is being translated to R1. Um, LED is a diode, it's going to be translated to D1. Uh, and etc. Like connectors are generally jumpers and so on. Uh, and then from there, you don't need to actually go to assign PCB footprints to schematic symbols, but this time I'm, I'm just going to do that just to demonstrate to you what does it mean to have an atomic library. So when you click on this, it's going to open a dialog uh, like the assign footprints dialog. And on the left side, you're gonna see the libraries. Uh, and in our case, it's just one. In the center part, you're gonna see the mappings. Um, so you'll see the, uh, the annotations of, of the individual symbols uh, and then their names, like the individual component names. And then what are the footprints that have been assigned to them? And as you've seen for a capacitor, there is a, C1206 uh, uh, footprint already assigned. Then for the LED, there's an LED1206 footprint already assigned. Uh, the same for pin headers and also the AT Tiny itself. And then if you, at any moment of your project, uh, let's say you want to uh, transfer your project from from a fabable project to let's say uh, a, a foundry uh, or in you know, a manufacturing house project, then you can let's say download um, a DigiKey library or the library of the of the manufacturing house, and you can easily uh, replace these footprints over here. So you can reassign them by using this tool. And now I'm going to go back to a, a schema. Just need to close the other dialog. Yeah, here. And basically, so you don't need to do any assignments um, because it's atomic, but the next uh, part would be to generate. You need to generate a netlist. Or before you do that, you would uh, like to perform an electrical rules check. Um, yeah, and in my case, it's actually complaining about the driven, uh, the driven pins, but that's fine. So you need to create a netlist. Uh, so you click that button. 
and it's gonna open you up this uh, netlist uh, dialog over here. And you hit uh, generate netlist and uh, it's gonna open yet another dialog uh, where you will need to be able to save the netlist file. And usually it's just gonna be derived from the name of your project. So in my case, it's hello t412 uh, and it's gonna be at the net extension and you just hit save. And then uh, you go back to a schema and here's this icon um, which is going to run PCB new and also open up the file which is related to the project that we are currently building. So they have a T412. So I click this. And since it only has one library to load, it opens quite quickly. Right here. And in order to load the, the netlist or, or the schematic into the PCB editor, you need to click this button. So update PCB from schematic. And it's gonna just, so if you click this button, it's just gonna link uh, you automatically to the netlist that you just created since it has the same, same, um, um, the, same uh, the same file name. So you hit update PCB and it's just gonna bring in the, um, the symbols uh, and the necessary footprints that have been mapped to to the symbols of, of the schematic that you are building. And in the case, um, so if you, if you have done some changes in, in the schematic, then using this tool is gonna allow you to either delete uh, redundant uh, footprints or add new footprints for the symbols that you just added in the, in the schematic of your solution, uh, of, your, of your board. Uh, and then you can close this. And um, then in PCB new, you will have this, uh, so these footprints, uh, all of the footprints that you need for the design uh, stuck to your cursor. And you can place them in any place. Uh, usually I think like center is, is good. So you click in the center, so they are here. And yeah, so these are, all the footprints for the boards that you're about to make in, in, in their real sizes and millimeters. And in PCB new, what is really important uh, to learn uh, if you are starting out is the, the concept of the grid. Uh, so grid is gonna save you uh, in a lot of situations. So while placing the components, um, yeah, you can use either fractional or, or millimeter grid. Uh, so usually start out with the 0.5 millimeters just move them around. But if you want to measure things, uh, then you might want to switch to something that is a bit smaller. So let's say this. And um, yeah, to make sure that this is in real, in real sizes, you can use one of the tools uh, to measure things. Um, I think like because of, because of the fact that my screen is quite small, I cannot see all the tools. Usually there is also the measurement tape. Uh, let's see. Uh, but yeah, if you don't have the measurement tool, then you can use also this dimension tool. So you can add a dimension. And uh, you can see that I'm not lying. So this is, uh, this is about two millimeters usually. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna switch back to this point five millimeters grid. Hey Chris, um, I just wanted to interrupt here. Yep. Uh, because sometimes I personally have had a situation where I have had to use stuff that's not in the inventory. And I think that might be a problem for people trying something new. And I was just wondering if you want to say some some words about like what if you have a component that doesn't exist in the fab inventory. All right, uh, so this, that's that's a good question actually. Um, so usually you should start out from the symbols that already exist. Um, I think in your case these were um, 
there are some capacitors. So you would be you would be using a polarized capacitor, uh, which is not necessarily. Uh, so the, the polar, polarized capacitor, it's um, very often that it's a different size. And in, in the Fab Academy, we don't use uh, too much of a polarized capacitor because, because we have this long list of ceramic capacitors. And yeah, that was your case. Um, so first of all, uh, you should navigate uh, to the um, to the documentation page to, and, and, and find the data sheet of the component in question. So maybe let's try to do that for, uh, for the sake of uh, the demonstration. So here I am in my browser and let's say I'm gonna na navigate to DigiKey and uh, I'm gonna change the language to English and update. And uh, look up a polarized capacitor. And uh, yeah, let's say let's say that we want one hundred uh, microfarads. And we want the voltage rating to be 50 volts. And uh, we want to, so let's, what could we add more more filters maybe? So audio. And we want, uh, let's say the diameter of it could be nine millimeters. Oh, okay, it's not working like this. Okay, so with eight millimeters, we are getting something. Okay, let's say it's this one. And it has the data sheet over here. Or the, the basic parameters, actually, you can find out here. Uh, so yeah, you see that there's a mounting type that is through hole, uh, the packaging and case is radial. And um, yeah, there's the size or dimension, uh, which is eight millimeters. And we need also to know the lead spacing. Uh, so that's very important is the pitch. So 3.5 millimeters. So basically these two parameters are gonna be essential for us. So 3.5 millimeters uh, of pitch and eight millimeters of diameter. So what do we do with this information? So we go back to, um, KiCad. Mm. So I would, I will go to the project view over here. And um, so we can open up the, uh, the schematic editor, which is this icon, like the, not the schematic, but the symbol editor in this case, um, which is um, a view for manipulating or for, for uh, editing the, the individual symbols. And what sh should you uh, do is you should look for something that is already there. And uh, you see like there's CP ELEC uh, 10 by 10. So CP stands for capacitor polarized um, and electrolytic um, and it's gonna be 10 by 10 uh, millimeters. Um, so this, uh, this name is already quite specific. So it's gonna be 10 by 10 millimeters. So it means that it has like a 10 by 10 millimeter footprint. Uh, but we can take this symbol and rename to something that we could use uh, our own. So we can just open it up and then go to file, save as. Uh, again, I don't, you probably don't see this save dialog over here so yeah you would see a dialog like this uh, where you can enter the name and in our case it's going to be eight millimeters and maybe i'm just going to be a bit more specific i'm just going to tell kai cat it's going to be a um electrolytic capacitor with diameter that is eight millimeters and before that i'm going to add also p which stands for pitch 
and it's going to be 3.5 millimeters like this um so also in the in the readme of the library there is a link to uh, to the KiCad library convention and if you are sometimes if you need to do this and you want to do it the proper way or kind of do do a proper naming then in the in the KiCad uh naming convention like, like the library convention you can find all these uh on all these shortcuts that you are recommended to use whenever you're making your library and yeah so this is going to be the name and i'm going to just save it in in the back in the fab library and hit save like this and then we're back to the symbol library and um can go to edit properties and we should also assign uh, a new footprint for it wait where's the zoom so here in the uh, in the in the footprint properties no no in the symbol properties you can also specify the footprint and well, most important more importantly you can also specify the data sheet you could actually copy the data sheet uh, url and, and paste it here and save it along with it and here uh yeah i'm gonna pitch 3.5 and diameter eight millimeters and uh, the thing is that this footprint is not yet there so i'm just gonna try yeah i'm gonna memorize the name they hit okay here um and go back to the symbol editor and go to file save to save it so now it's, it's saved with, with all the properties so it's also going to be an atomic element like a symbol that is going to lead to a specific footprint and now we can close the symbol editor and we can go to uh the, from the project view, you can go to the footprint editor. So you click click on that. So we are in the footprint editor, and now we need to find something existing there. Uh, so which is going to be the same uh, capacitor. Let's see. Yeah, CP ELEC 10 by 10 millimeters. So it looks like this. Mm. And in this case, it's um, it's not a through hole one, but it's um, it's a uh, uh, it's a SMD like surface mount one. But that's an easy thing to change. So, but if we start from here, the first thing to do is to go to file, uh, save as, and save it as a new as a new uh, footprint here so you're gonna get a similar dialogue over here i don't remember what i used millimeters probably not and then i'm going to save it also in the fab library like this and here i'm going to do a couple of changes so i'm going to change these so what I what I just did is I uh, selected the, the the one of the paths and I hit E uh, for edit, and um, here you can change um, the type of the footprints. And you can set the size. It's usually uh, much sure was it just one millimeters, and then and then you can. Also change the size of the shape. So you usually want to have at least 0.5 millimeters around it. So I would say like 2.5 or 2.2 is a good number for this one. And uh, so since we want to have 3.5 millimeters spacing or pitch, then we would uh, also adjust that uh, with using the 
X or Y positioning. So in this case, uh, these pads were offset from the center um, and they were symmetrical towards the Y axis. So if we split 3.5 in half, it's 1.75. Like so. And it's going to look like this. And the same I'm going to do with the, with the second one, just uh, very quickly, uh, without showing the, this um, dialogue over there. So the whole size is going to be one millimeters, then 1.75 as the position X, and the size X is going to be is going to be 2.2. Okay, so here we go. And if we use the measurement tools that are available here, so you see there's a little uh, caliper. So you can actually, uh, let's switch to another grid. You can just select these centers over here, and you can see that the distance is, uh, yeah, well, shows a little bit different because the, the grid is a bit uh, tricky, but. Yeah, it's like 3.5 millimeters. So the distance between uh, centers of these is 3.5. And then uh, you can choose whether to do the rest of the things. So it's usually nice also to edit the courtyards. Um, so all the different layers. So it's a bit involving um, actually to create like a proper part that you could submit submit back to the library. Um, but it kind of makes sense to, uh, to do that sometimes to understand the inner workings of KiCad, so how it does the design rule checking, for example. So it needs the so there's the, the courtyard layer, which is uh, defining the outline of all the all the copper of all the elements that that are on your footprint, uh, so that it uh, it can help with collision detection in, in the design rules check and, and so on. And then these other graphics are, so they, the blue lines are, for example, uh, the silkscreen uh, layer. So which is very nice if you want to send it to, to the manufacturing house. So it's gonna be printed on your board and it's gonna make uh, the placement of the components much easier. Uh, but yeah, but this is the way how you would uh, do it. Uh, and then you would save the changes and you would close the window and then you could, um, yeah, starting from the schematic editor uh, to the PCB editor, you could just uh, use these newly created components. Um, Chris? Yeah. Chris, I just wanted to ask, but as a newbie, okay, I may be asking a fairly obvious question here, but I, I just wanted to understand. You, you're, in effect, you're creating, for me, in, in my language, okay, you're creating um, a custom component from an existing component. Uh, and then utilizing is in, 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 in your schematic. Yes. The question I have is this, if you wanted to inject that into the main library for future, so it becomes available, a new component, um, is it better to do that? Because when you update the, 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 the KiCad fab from uh, GitLab, you're going to wipe out these custom components or are they going to sit are they going to sit are they still going to be there the these these new derived components you've made will they be overwritten by the update it depends how you do it uh, there's a risk of losing them um so in with this in mind so if you have your local components your own components then what i actually recommend is to to make your own library that sits in parallel with, with the fab library. I think that's that's much better. Uh, when you when you really feel that you uh, are making a contribution, then I, I think it makes sense to add it to the fab library and uh, add an issue or, or a pull request. Um, and that, that I could show you in a minute actually how to, uh, how to add a pull request. It's, it's a bit involving. But here, yeah, I. I don't know whether it makes sense to kind of complete this schematic. Um, I'm just gonna like a quick, make a quick, quick um, layout without actually uh, making the traces so that you can see the, the other functionality of it, which is the, um, which is, which is uh, looking at the, at the board. So, uh, the 3D rendering of the board. So here you can 
uh, so, so we have to specify the edge cuts of, of everything. So we need to draw a polygon around it. First, I'm going to choose the one millimeter grid for this. Like this. Just really quick outline. No, wait. And this so now we have an outline and then you can go to view and uh, and uh, 3d viewer I need to share yes. and uh, you have the, the board as a 3d model already so you see there's there's some 3d models that I have uh, already added so for the AT tiny and the headers the models are there for the capacitor the models are there the resistors also there uh, so there there's still no for for an led uh, but uh, what is cool about this is so also KiCad allows two types of 3d models it allows meshes and it also allows step models to be imported and I'm using uh, step models because if you use step it means that you uh, that KiCad uh, translates all of this to step which can be imported in um, any of the CAD uh, packages and then you can build uh, you can build your solution around it referring to the dimensions that it has so basically this is a 3d model you can step 3d model that you can now export uh, as a step file where was it did they Or uh, I think I need to close this dialogue and uh, it's actually going to be in the PCB new. Close the 3 viewer. So yeah, from here, uh, yeah, you could go to file, export, and then, uh, yeah, you can, where, where, where is it again, CAD? Um, oh yeah, that's the step file over here. I don't know why it's not active at the at the moment, but um, I have to investigate this. But yeah, well, normally you would be able to do that. I think that because uh, it's not really ready yet, so you need to perform the design rule check, and you really need to make sure that everything connects, and then probably it's going to let you to export the step file. So, uh, but then back to. Brandon's question about how you would contribute. Mm. So let's see. Now that we have added this one component, uh, you'd be able to see it in the terminal um, by issuing this git status command. Uh, ah, yeah, because this is this is the one that I downloaded, but this is not necessarily the one that I just updated. So I'm going to go to my copy of um, of um, it. So yeah, uh, when you add changes to the library, you should um, you should then see something like this. So you see there are some files modified to so the fab DCM, uh, which is responsible for the descriptions of the symbol files. So it has some information, some additional information about what uh, each symbol does. So some keywords and so on. And then fab.lib, which uh, actually has the new symbol. And then, yeah, you see that one footprint, uh, so the potentiometer, model has been modified. I, I think this is from, from changes that I did earlier. So this is uh, something not related to, to what I just did now. But you see that there's also a list of untracked files um, with instructions how to proceed. Uh, so there's this fab pretty CP ALEC uh, 3.5 uh, times 8 millimeters TICAD. So that's the, that's the one that we might want to have. Then before um, doing any commits and, and pushes and anything, it's um, you can make use of the test py uh, file. So if you have Python 3 installed, um, 
it's going to test the integrity of uh, whatever you have done um, with the with the symbols and footprints. And you see it's notifying you that footprint file does not exist. Uh, so this comes from the, the script actually going through the components in the in the library file and checking whether for each of the symbols there's a matching footprint. And for the new symbol that we created, uh, we can see that uh, probably the name just doesn't match. So we see that one of the uh, files that is not added um, has has this X instead of an un, uh, underscore over here. And uh, we can choose what to do. We can either choose the name of this file or we can choose the, to, to change the description of the symbol. So in this case, I think I'm just gonna remove, rename this file. So I'm gonna move uh, this to a pretty CP black. And instead of this X, I'm going to use the underscore and, and then launch the test script once more. And yeah, it still tells me that it doesn't exist. So it's a P3. Ah, okay. So there's um, another thing that I need to add the D there before the eight. Okay. Now test. So now the error is gone. And uh, so there are some more errors. So I, I recently added mounting holes and so uh, I didn't add any symbols for them yet, but I think I'm going to add specific mount mounting hole symbols there as well. And then for the, uh, for the sake of this presentation, I added a footprint, which basically is a fab logo. So you can use KaiKai as a, as a graphics software if you want. Um, yeah, now the ideal state is that you, that you do not get any errors when running test PY. And some more tests are gonna be added as we go next year. Uh, and now, yeah, since we added these new symbols, you can add, uh, so git add, so the, files that were changed. Lib and then fab for the pretty CP alloc, uh, uh. And then git, is, git status is gonna show us what's in the staging area. So the, uh, yeah, the, the files that are about to be added to the commit. Uh, so we have three files with their specific changes. And then we can add a message that adding new and footprint for through hole capacitor with a three three point five millimeter pitch and eight millimeter diameter. If I type git log then I say this. Um, yeah, for so if you would, if I just would be, uh, if you would be just directly modifying the library uh, now, it would be enough to just git push, and it's just gonna upload to, to the. If you are ma ma uh, one of the maintainers or developers of the project, it would just uh, update the main branch. But if you wanna use, um, uh, if you wanna do a pull request, then it's actually better to clone the repository to your own own GitLab account and actually make um, a branch. Uh, and uh, I'm just gonna roll back the changes. So I copy this. So you can go back a comment. And before we make a comment, we could actually switch to a new branch. I'm going to call the branch demo. Then I'm going to get add all the same files and get commits over the same message like this. And if we type git branch, 
we see that we are on the demo branch. And uh, now I'm gonna git push uh, origin demo. It's gonna push the demo branch to to the repository. And let's go back to. Here you go, uh, the browser, and then here when I refresh the page, you'll see that instead of uh, one branch, there are two branches. And it's also automatically running a test. And uh, yeah, because uh, it is it is residing on the on the same repository, I cannot really submit the pull request. But if you would have the repository on your uh, on your repository, you will be able to to, to submit the pull request. And on um, on the Fab Library part, you would see it similar to this um, that it would appear in this list. And depending on whether the tests pass or uh, if if everything works, then I can just click this merge request button, and um, and it's gonna merge it with the with the master branch. Uh, but usually, so especially if you're starting out, um, the way how the best way how to contribute is actually to go to the issue tracker of the project which is here and just submit an issue. So click on the new issue, add that uh, add uh, something like this. Um, And then from here, once you submit it, uh, we just have a discussion about it, what would be the best way to solve it. And then anybody who is involved in the discussion would be then assigned to, to the problem and, and fix it. And then we would just uh, close the issue. So for it is good actually to, uh, to keep each of the problems as a separate issue, because then, then we can kind of use the the flow that GitLab, uh, the, all the, the sort of selection of tools that GitLab uh, gives us, so the, the project management tools. Because once we fix one issue, we can close it, and then it, it gives the feeling of, of moving the project forward. So that's, uh, yeah, so that's my recommendation. I think I should make an, uh, a separate video on, on, the, on the pull requests, because I think there are too many, too many options to branch off. Uh, from so there, there's the, the the simple way of doing it, and then there's the complicated way of doing it, and there are quite a lot of points where you can kind of get uh, get lost. So uh, as to stay in the scope of this discussion, I would I would just recommend you to whenever you you face an issue with the, with a fab library, just uh, just add an issue, and then you know, we can figure it out. Uh, Chris, a question? Yeah. Um, so, well, uh, Alex is asking when you can make the presentation, if, it's, if, if, if this is being recorded, will you make it available and when can you, uh, how can I share it? So this is being recorded as a, uh, in, in on the cloud, uh, as far as I understand. So it's uh, the, the Fab Cloud. And I think that the Fab Foundation is sort of responsible for releasing these videos and these tutorials. Um, so these, these, these conference videos online. But um, as for as for tutorials regarding KiCad, um, so at the beginning of, of this session, I already showed this page. So I've, I've been teaching the Fab Academy uh, at the Alpha Fab Lab this year, and I recorded um, a bunch of videos uh, as part of my teaching practice, uh, teaching different things, uh, not just uh, not just KiCad, and. And you can find some of the uh, KiCad related videos here. Um, and as I go next year, uh, I will do another iteration on the on the KiCad videos with uh, 
possibly some new things, new tricks, uh, new best practices and so on. But for now, if you want to use the second part of the year to improve on, on KiCad and, and the fab, fab library, then feel free to use uh, these videos. And well, one thing that I could say is that uh, the, 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 um, the, the latest, latest videos are definitely better. So they are more up to date with the, with the current information related to the, to the fab library and so on. Uh, yeah, Chris, so one more question is about, uh, from Dean, um, it's about like the 3D model of the board. Um, he's asking, can you show how you can route the traces? And he's saying that he remembers a decade ago that he would take the, they would take the traces and create a PNG, which would then be milled out by the modella. Is that still the procedure that is used in KiCad? So the way how we do it is um, we export an SVG. Um, so it depends really. Uh, if you if you want to use mods, then you need to export SVG. And uh, for single uh, single sided boards, that's very straightforward and easy. But the problem starts when you need to uh, when you want to start to drill holes and when you want to start making double sided boards. Uh, at the Alto Fab Lab, what do we do? we use um, copper cam. Um, you can also use flat cam. Uh, these are a bit more advanced tools uh, for creating tool paths for a PCB milling. And instead of using only milling bits, you can also use drills. Uh, so for drilling holes, using drills is much better than uh, so, um, the, yeah, but also in the in the website over here, if you see, there's a video PCB milling and drilling with SRN20. So this is um, and using copper cam uh, for PCB milling with SRN20. So from my perspective, if you would ask me, I would uh, probably avoid uh, using mods for. So if you want to get uh, forward with the PCB manufacturing, um, because um, even though exporting the traces as images is sort of more sustainable if you look forward, like into the future. So everybody can open them and uh, cross check them. Uh, and um, so you don't need any kind of uh, crazy advanced algorithms in order to deal with them, but the existing tools, the existing tool chain is, uh, is built around GRB, uh, not GRBLs, but uh, Gerber files. And this is the case also with a flat cam and um, copper cam. So you can already start uh, figuring out uh, the, the Gerber file generation in KiCad, and then you can use copper cam and flat cam in order to generate the tool paths, not only for milling, but also for clearing out the areas. You can specify, uh, you can make some tool paths, some traces to be engraved as lines. For example, if you want to engrave your name, you don't have to mill around your name, but you can engrave them as lines. Then you can, like drilling is much easier. So you, instead of using a milling bit for drilling, you can actually insert uh, uh, an actual drill, drill bit into the machine and it's gonna drill and it's gonna be also much faster. So, yeah, I would recommend to go with this. So you, you've you already created all the files in your presentation. I mean, you, you kind of got up to the point where you showed us the 3D uh, rendering of the board. Yeah. But most of the files have been created and it would just be a matter of taking those files and uh, using that to uh, mill out the board with a software package of your choice. Uh, the 3D model is not necessary for for PCB milling. Uh, no, so I, I, I know you just showed her, you just showed us the 3D model, but I didn't. Uh, I, I again, again, my memory on this is a decade old. Uh, you yeah. know, we would usually place the parts, and then we would use, uh, you know, then of course let the computer figure out the traces. And like you say, ah. well, it was one side, but you know, it could be two sides. In which case, we would have to put in a via and flip the board over. And again, we didn't have the tools 10 years ago that you do today, but I, I guess I was just wondering how, how we got to the end product from, uh, from where you left us. Because uh, you, you kind of had uh, moved the parts around visually to kind of give yourself the best shot at getting a single-sided board or two-sided board perhaps. Uh, but, but what's the step forward to uh, finish that so that it could be then sent to, the, uh, to a milling machine? 
Okay, I'm going to show a few steps. So since we are running out of time, um, yeah, I'm going to show a few steps. Uh, so that, but but the, generally on the on the YouTube channel, you can find all the videos uh, that would uh, show you a greater detail of how it's being done. Uh, but one of the things that you should uh, do here um, is yeah, switch to the copper layer. Um, first of all and then start drawing uh, traces. So before drawing traces also, it's important to uh, navigate to the track menu and kind of uh, edit the predefined sizes so that they match, so that they are not like 0 .20, 0 0.25 millimeters, but um, so for fabricating them, we need like 0.4. So to make it the milling easier, uh, but here, yeah. So you just uh, draw the traces uh, like so. So in the videos on the channel, there's a much, much greater detail in how this is done. Um, so this is just a quick uh, walkthrough. So, so, so it's, not like, here, it's not like Eagle where uh, it will give you a number of different solutions. You act physically go in with your cursor for smaller, and you draw for, the traces. Yeah, so for smaller boards like this, I would actually recommend doing this instead of using the auto router. So there's also an auto, uh, auto routing uh, option, but um, I'm gonna, uh, I, I think I'm a victim of um, all the CACAD tutorials available online and, and, the, and the personalities making them that uh, all of them, they are saying that don't use auto router. So there, <laughs> there are even um, yeah, t-shirts with, you know, being proud of not using auto router. And I think like for, for small boards like this, you don't really need them. And then just, uh, since I have, uh, since I come from the arts background, the new media background, so it's sort of, you know, this aesthetical, it's, it's a pleasure, pleasurable pl process to, to go over uh, here and kind of adjust the, the corners of the traces or they look nice and uh, um, I kind of become one with the board. Uh, and then from here, you would uh, use the plot function over here, uh, so the pl plot uh, icon. And uh, you would export the Gerber files. So wait a minute. Again, I need to share the specific window so that you can see it as well. So here, uh, so there's, it's a bit. Um, so you need to check only the layers that you might need. So this is in the case if you are using copper cap. So you'll need just the front copper and edge cuts layer. Uh, and then you definitely don't need to plot the footprint values or manufacturing with your SRM20. You don't need the references. Um, what you want to have is uh, the actual PCB edge layer from other layers, so you don't want to exclude it. Uh, and then silk screen is also not something that you need. Uh, I know that with the vinyl cutter, you could actually make a really nice solder masks. So you can cut this uh, epoxy tape that is also in the fab inventory, and you can, uh, yeah make it so that uh, it's you can stick it on the pcb afterwards and uh, only the the copper that is needed for soldering is then available for you to process uh, through it uh, so that's this is all good for for flexible pcbs by the way but yeah so here you need to um uh yeah uncheck all these things um it's good to use the extended x2 format um that's that's recommended by uh, Copper Cam. Um, it's gonna make it easier for you to align the drilling holes uh, and all the layers and together. And then you would just click on save, and um, and uh, yeah, no, not save, but a plot. Yeah, in this case, it's, it would be plot. And also generate drill files. You need the, the drill files, and that's that's another dialogue actually. So it looks like this uh but yeah uh refer to the to the youtube channel so since we are running out of time um so all of all of that is explained there and um yeah during the, ne the next year there are going to be more uh, tutorials with uh, up-to-date information okay thank you so uh did i miss something yeah i think uh, we're to so yeah, maybe there are, there are more questions. No, uh, there's no more questions right now. So if you want to have an open discussion. Yes. 
Yeah, I mean, I just added a point that there is a lot of small details in KiCad that uh, that come up when you're actually going from schematic to PCB milling. There's a lot of small things that come up. Um, so I guess you only you only encounter those when you actually are doing it hands on. Yeah, I think like uh, one one thing that I noticed is that sometimes in the hello boards, uh, when new components are being introduced, um, Neil uses the uh, parts available in the inventory. So let's say for motor drivers, if you open up the data sheet uh, of, of them individually, they usually use different kinds of uh, capacitors. So that's that's the case for the, let's say the, the half bridge, uh, the, the half full bridge driver for driving DC motors. Uh, so in the data sheet, the recommended capacitor uh, to use is a 100 uh, microfarad one, but um, in the fab library uh, with the ceramic capacitors, we go only up to 10 microfarads. So there's not a bigger one. Um, and uh, what I would recommend to do, so before you dig into making these new footprints as a beginner, so if you are already uh, knowledgeable with CLICAD, I'd recommend to experiment as much as possible with the existing uh, components uh, because it's very easy, especially if you are um, if you are late or if you're let's say if you don't have is it because for every assignment there's only a week and you 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 need to make your board you need to document it and. Um, so you need to kind of have the feeling of, of something that is finished. So instead of uh, you know trying trying to dive into the little details of KiCad, how to add a new symbol and a new footprint, the Fab Library can help you to actually avoid that uh, if you kind of try to reuse the components that are already there. Because uh, even though in the data sheet uh, like it's 100 microfarad capacitor is used. Uh, if you refer to the hello boards, Neil uses 10 microfarad and I tested it and it just works fine. So in the Fab Academy, are you still mostly milling your boards or are you etching them now? Milling, uh, like in, in the lab uh, here. So uh, uh, me as a lab manager, I just don't want to deal with a lot of chemicals because there are a lot of things that can go wrong uh, on top of that anyways. So milling the boards, it's really the easiest. So there's not so much uh, that can go wrong. With chemicals, you need, um, you need to take more care, especially if there are students around and you know, random people. Yeah, I, I guess I was wondering uh, because the components seem to get smaller and smaller, maybe not so much in the fab inventory, but a lot of the parts that are available now seem to be, <clears throat> much smaller and perhaps harder to mill but i guess you just stick with parts that can be done on a i don't know if you use a modella milling machine or you use you use a milling machine of some kind i guess that uh, will uh, cut out the traces and get, give you enough distance between the uh, between the pads so the milling machines themselves they have enough precision so they have um you know, they're the one hundredth of a millimeter. It's quite enough to to mill even the smallest traces of, of some chips. So of the chips that we are using, and the, even if they are getting smaller, I think I haven't seen really in the Fab Academy context uh, anything that would have less than 0.2 millimeter pitch. So, and then, so since the machine has the precision, then uh, what is important is it is it's important to have the right tool. So. Um, Usually, like in the inventory, there is also uh, you know flat end um, 0.1 millimeter tool, or if you are using um, an engraving tool uh, with let's say like a tapered one, then you can make you can take the one which has which is a bit sharper, uh, so which also basically corresponds to 0.2 millimeters. So that's still possible, but uh, I think I would start to become a bit worried because maybe in, in 10 years, the parts are gonna be even smaller. So on what to do then? Well, the problem we had was we broke a lot of bits and the bits were expensive 10 years ago. I imagine they're still pretty expensive today. Yeah. 
they are. <laughs> and uh, but uh, I think it's you know, like the the people who are just starting out, they're gonna they're gonna break them anyways. So with that in mind, I think uh, before PCB milling, it's actually nice to have uh, a general introduction about CNC and kind of to for for the, for the beginners to get a decent understanding of uh, what does it mean, what uh, what's what's a feed rate, uh, what's uh, revolutions per minute, so what's uh, depth of cut, so these kind of basic things. But then uh, I also remember from my Fab Academy experience, I would just uh, learn about these. Uh, well, breaking bits, but uh, I wouldn't break that many. <laughs> so once once there's a rule, let's say that you break a bit and then you need to do 50 push-ups, then maybe that could work. But I think you might want to add that the, the mill bits that were being used, they were actually very easily breakable. And you got this new set, which is pretty robust. Yeah. So there are two strategies. So uh, with the previous bits, I was trying to get cheaper bits, uh, kind of expecting that they're going to be um, they're going to be get broken. Um, that didn't work quite well because they were breaking too often. So I got more expensive bits um, and they started to break less. And I think also what, what mattered was that um, I think I individually uh, kind of started to slowly explain what is what. And uh, at the beginning, the people were breaking bits, but then slowly, uh, I think at the, the last two months, only you know one or two bits were broken because everybody got used to the new bits and understood about the feed rates and everything so those are the bits that are in the inventory then have inventory no. or is this different look they're could different you a, could you could you put a link up the bits that you're using that you've had good success with it's a, a website uh, called circuit uh, let me see oh okay so here's the browser window um no, 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 not this one. This one. So I'm getting the bits from here. They are really good. So the consumables, uh, they, yeah, do not get the FR4 PCBs because that's, um, that's kind of, yeah, like for a lab that is where, where there are many random people that doesn't work. But what I got, um, I was, I got this um, PCB isolation milling tool, uh, they have different um, diameters. So for the normal traces, so the 0.4 millimeter traces. So this uh, basically, if, you, if you're going um, 0.1 millimeter deep, then this leaves um, 0.4 millimeter trace. Uh, so this, this would be for the rough, rough cuts for the, for the, let's say 80 tiny 412s. And then this other one, which is 0.1 to 0.15, uh, millimeters uh, diameter. So this would be, this is equivalent to 0.2 millimeter trace. So if you have smaller uh, traces to mill, then this is very useful. And so these, these have uh, sharp ends. So they are more like arrows. I remember, oh, so Ferdi actually from, from the Fab Academy, he recommended those and initially he said that yeah you can even cut with those but then you have to be very careful with the depth of cut uh with these you cannot really go um, more than 0.1 maybe 0.2 millimeters at the same time and you have to watch the the feed rate so with these i use um uh was it like um 10 millimeters per second um yeah and then then it works fine 10 millimeters per second 0.1 millimeter uh cutting depth um, with the revolutions. So with SRM20, you can not really go above 7,000. I think it goes above 7,000 when you set it on the high uh, preset. But uh, yeah, with the MDX40, I use 9,000 and, and it works well. So then it's, it's, it doesn't break. It doesn't break. But then if you forget to, let's say, set the Z and you accidentally go deeper and, and faster, then obviously it breaks. One Another thing to keep in mind before you start milling, just check the, the tip of it under the microscope, just to check whether it's really sharp. Because it's not going to be sharp, then and it means that it's going to uh, go deeper from the, from the place where it's broken. And it's just going to take off more copper than you want. 
Yeah, I would second that. This is extremely robust compared to what we had before. I think one of these we use for maybe 1,000 runs without breaking no, during that... the peak of fab. <laughs> Peak of Fab Academy, I think many of us just use one bit. Yeah, I think like one is able to easily survive 50 uh, or, or 100 boards if, if you if you take care. And then this um, contour uh, end milling bit. So this is very useful for cutting. And if you have one millimeter holes, then it's also you can use it as a drill. And with this, you can go up to even I wouldn't recommend 20, like 15 millimeters per second, or I think we use we use 10 millimeters per second just uh, just for safety and um, and with 0.6 um, uh, millimeter cut depth, and this is really fast and good for cutting. And then here you can also have the PCB drilling tools. Uh, so you can choose, you can get the, all the available sizes. But what I would recommend to get from the drills is um, uh, obviously the 0.8 millimeter. Uh, so this is good for for the vias. So they're, they're the smaller rivets for for the vias, um, and then there are the bigger rivets which you can use to reinforce uh, header connections, and then. Those um, are with the outer diameter of 1.5 millimeters. And yeah, you, you need to drill uh, a bit bigger hole. But you also need to make sure that you leave enough copper around that hole so that to, to be able to actually connect it into both sides of the board. And then I am getting, so for mounting holes, uh, I would recommend to have, well, yeah, one millimeter, obviously. So this is good for, if you're doing a single-sided board and you have a through hole headers that you want to attach from the other side. So then you can just drill the one, one millimeter holes. And then for mounting holes, you would usually use two millimeters or 2.5 millimeters or three millimeters. So, these these are all the all the bits for the PCB milling that you would possibly need. So I think like that we are already going over time. Um, so uh, thank you very much for for joining. Uh, it was an opportunity for me to get back to to the flow of the Fab and and Fab Academy because like after one uh, approximately one month of vacation, I've been. I almost forgot about the, the Fab Academy and Fab Lab uh, movement to exist. So it was a nice refresher. And uh, yeah, I hope to see all of you in the in other sessions because I think like during this session, I already missed some of the things that I wanted to listen uh, to participate myself. Uh, so before I say bye and see you around, maybe you have something some last words to say. I just say thank you. Uh, as an instructor, it's quite easy to have like a comprehensive. Uh, it's easier to teach after this, after your presentation, because sometimes you do stuff and you kind of you are embedded into it, and and um, you made you made my life easier. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, that's great to know. Chris, just to say thank you, um, jumping with both big feet into all of this uh, and not, not being familiar with it. It's been very informative, very valuable and, and lots, to, uh, lots to learn. Uh, and very interesting stuff. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I'm glad that uh, uh, I helped you out and uh, then also if you if you're using it and if you notice some problems or you, you see that it can be improved in any way just uh, either write me directly or add an issue. Uh, so using the issue tracker it totally makes sense the most because uh, then you know you can keep all, all of that in one place. But thank you very much and uh, see you in the other sessions. And uh, let's keep this open, uh, Ranjit, for, for one minute more.